When he first started working for this company, all of the driver's families had to join them in a mandatory orientation. We had to watch a documentary on the ranch and about the things that happen around it. My dad doesn't believe in anything paranormal or close to it, so he didn't really believe this movie or his co-workers' stories. Basically, they told him that if he sees anything out there, smells rotting flesh, hears strange sounds, he has to shut down his pump and get into the truck immediately. Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. Today I have five of your own scary stories to read to you today. And um, one of these is about a certain ranch that um, is said to house certain things. So stay tuned for that one. I haven't read it yet, but I know it's, it's gonna be a freaking doozy. All right, let's start off with story number one. I'm 23 from Mississippi and I just moved here from the Appalachian Mountains. I think something followed me. I got settled in my small one bedroom house about a month ago and the first week was ridiculously calm. But that second Wednesday after moving in, I went to a local gas station for a late night snack. It's around 12 at night at this time. And when I pull back up to my house and get out of the car, I swear I could feel the pressure shift. I felt like something was watching me. The same feeling I would always get living with my parents in Appalachia. While in Appalachia at the age of 19, I was on a trail with my little brother behind our parents' house. While walking, I was whistling a song to myself when my little brother froze and whispered at me to stop. Please stop. I was confused until I realized what I had just done. Me and my brother acted like it didn't happen and calmly exited the trail and went back home. Later that night, there was a terrible scream that sounded like it was coming from the trail. My dad ushered us all to get in the house. All my mind will let me remember is the scream that erupted from my little brother's mouth after looking through the glass doors facing the trail. A tall, four-legged shadow creature with glowing red eyes is how my brother described him. I immediately motioned for him to look away. My mom rushed over and shut the curtains while staring at the ground. I, 23 years old, truly believe I called whatever that was to me. Because getting out of that car and reliving the past four years of my life all at once is truly a shaking feeling. The creature was looking at me outside through my bedroom window, which is positioned in front of my driveway. The gaping mouth and sunken eyes, bright red, I got in my car and pulled slowly out of my driveway and booked a hotel an hour and a half away. But that wasn't my only occurrence. I'm just too nervous to explain the rest. But I am moving again as soon as I can. Maybe it's hunting me, maybe it just tagged along with me to Mississippi, but wherever that thing is, I don't want to be. I didn't think Appalachian creatures would do half the things this one has done, but it's haunting me, and I'm desperate for an escape. If you have any tips, I would love to know. I unfortunately have no tips because I also accidentally called one to me and haven't been able to get rid of it, but I do know from, I mean, stories just like this one that they do follow you, and that's something I try to talk about a lot is while these things do primarily live in the mountains. They don't stay there. Um, they can go anywhere they want. It does not matter. Once one has decided it's obsessed with you, it follows you. And it's really unfortunate, but it, it does happen. So if I ever figure out how to get rid of it myself, I will relay that information. But until then, I, I am also stuck. I also just don't go outside at night by myself ever anymore. Not the advice anyone wanted, but unfortunately it is all the advice that I have. All right, let's get into story number two. I have a lot of paranormal experiences in my life. My mom thankfully was open-minded and asked around about my situation when I was younger. We were told I'm sensitive to the other side. I can't remember the term they used, probably clairvoyant. Here's the first story and my scariest experience. It's rarely believed because everyone tells me it was just sleep paralysis. I've never experienced sleep paralysis previous to this experience or after. I was living with my great aunt and uncle at their small hobby farm down in a small town. I went to live with him when I was 24 after my dad passed. I wanted to get to know his side of the family better. Mistake. The house had a negative feeling and my aunt was a negative person. I always felt uncomfortable and unwelcome and they had lots of animals but none were allowed in the home. I left my heart with my cat and my mom at the time. I was lying in bed when I was woken up by a dark figure standing over me. It felt like I was being held down. I could feel this entity had malicious intent. It felt pure evil. In the past, I was always able to tell the spirit or whatever to leave me alone, but I couldn't speak and I couldn't move. I felt like I was fighting against something. Eventually, I was able to say leave or go away. It's been 10 years since this happened. When he released me, it left. I immediately ran to the window and let the barn kitties in through the window and every night after that until I left. Second story from the same person. Around the same time of my life, I had been living with my now ex-boyfriend and I had fallen asleep in a rocking chair. We had my heart cat and two dogs with us, but I must have been alone at the time I fell asleep. I was woken up by someone screaming in my face to wake up. The dogs immediately ran into the room. This was the middle of the day. I couldn't leave the house when it was dark out and I always felt like something was just within the dark watching me. Final story from this follower. 
I was very young and my babysitter at the time had her boyfriend over and wanted to have alone time. So she locked me in the closet. It was pitch black and I don't remember what happened, but something was in the dark with me. And when I came out, I was so scared, but I had found an imaginary friend who protected me. They stayed with me for a long time. I can still visually see the imaginary friend too. They were lanky and didn't have features, but I named them Fred. I couldn't sleep with the lights off for many years after that. Those are my top three experiences that I remember. Locked you in the closet? What in the carry? Oh. This is story number three and it's pretty short. When I was around four or five years old, my mom, stepdad, four siblings, and I moved into an old white farmhouse in Southern Pennsylvania. A few months after moving in, weird stuff started to happen and a few marbles rolled down the stairs even though none of us kids had marbles. I used to have a ghost friend and my grandmother always tried to get them to show themselves. There was one day my mom was on her computer and a dart flew by her head and landed three feet from her. My aunt and Nan would see a man always standing in the doorway of the shed out back, about halfway between the house and the cornfield. The man was an evil spirit and would peek in windows. I guess my mom brought her cousin who's a preacher. They said there were two little girl spirits and a woman spirit in the house. The woman spirit was protecting us and keeping the male spirit out. But we moved out of there and at the end of my kindergarten year. Fast forward to when I was around 18 and my mom wanted to buy that house again, but someone already lived there. The funniest thing about the story is June of 22, we moved into a house on top of the hill above the old white farmhouse. Story number four. I would like to share one of my personal ghost stories with you. To start, my name is Taz. Me and my friend were exploring around the city when we found a huge abandoned building. We were looking through the windows and it seemed to be a daycare or something like that. We pulled on the door and it actually opened. When you walk in, there's a receptionist counter and a big room next to it. If you walk past that, there were three rooms at the end of the building. We walked into the room next to the counter and my friend saw a door and walked in. I left the room and heard this voice calling me from one of the back rooms. I assumed the door he went through must have led to the room in the back. I heard him calling, Taz, come check this out. I ran to the back room and saw him standing in the corner facing the wall, not talking, not moving. I kept telling him to cut it out because his perfect stillness was freaking me out. As soon as I walked into that room, I had a horrible feeling of dread. I got the most uncomfortable feeling. I felt like I needed to get out of that building. I told him that I was getting freaked out and that we should leave and he still didn't move. He didn't talk. At this point, he was taking this joke way too far and I was leaving the room. I noticed that there were no doors in that room except for the one that I entered through. I got goosebumps and turned completely pale. I mean, how would he be able to get in that room when he never left the room at the entrance? I ran out of the room screaming for my friend and watched him walk out of the room at the entrance yelling at me to calm down. I ran past him and into that room he was in and barged into the door he originally walked into. I knew what it was going to be, but I'll never forget the absolute terror I felt when I opened the door to only find a closet. I grabbed my friend and sprinted out of that building and as far as I could before my friend ripped away screaming about what I was doing. I told him what happened and we just looked at each other. We went home after that, but that day I was super sick. Couldn't eat, throwing up everywhere. I always wonder what happened in that room and what that was impersonating my friend. What would have happened if I approached it? It scares me to think about it. Thanks for reading my story, but I'll never forget that moment. Oh, that's awful. And we've come to the final story, which is titled My Dad's Skinwalker Story from Near Skinwalker Ranch. My dad no longer hauls crude oil for this company, but he does work dispatch for the crude side. They occasionally get reports from either own drivers or drivers for other companies. I know this isn't really along the lines of a haunting, but I thought it would be interesting to share with you. This is not my story, but it is my dad's. A little backstory, he hauls crude oil in the southeastern Utah. He works very close to a very notorious ranch here in Utah. When he first started working for this company, all of the driver's families had to join them in a mandatory orientation. We had to watch a documentary on the ranch and about the things that happen around it. My dad doesn't believe in anything paranormal or close to it, so he didn't really believe this movie or his co-workers' stories. Basically, they told him that if he sees anything out there, smells rotting flesh, hears strange sounds, he has to shut down his pump and get into the truck immediately. The drivers are not allowed to carry any protection with them because anything with a spark will, as you know, go badly. So they have heavy metal rods and shovels to protect themselves from snakes and other animals that they may come into contact with. This information is very important for you to be able to understand what I'm about to tell you. My dad was a few months out of his orientation and he was training a new driver. Let's call him Mike. Mike was driving and my dad was just supervising the entire time. He was only allowed to offer helpful advice to Mike while he was his trainer. This meant that my dad had to watch Mike pump as well. Pumping is just them hooking a hose to the tanker trailer and watching a valve to make sure, valve, why did I say it like that? <laughs> watching a valve to make sure that it doesn't overflow or go too fast. So my dad and Mike are standing beside the truck, just talking and waiting for the truck to fill up. 
The truck that Mike was driving had two trailers, each taking about an hour and a half to fill up, so they had a while to just chat. They're standing there talking about something or another when my dad and Mike both go silent at the same time. Over the smell of the oil, they could smell the unmistakable scent of rotting flesh. My dad told Mike to shut down the pump and get in the truck, so they did, and they got into the cab as fast as possible. Mike locked the doors and they sat in silent darkness. Out where the well was, the closest building was a trailer about three miles away, so it was completely dark out there. My dad turned his head. He said he thought he'd heard someone whisper his name. He looked down at a huge wolf. If you've ever seen a semi-truck before, you know that the cabs are pretty far off the ground. He said that the back of the wolf came up to the second step leading to the cab, around six feet off the floor. By this point, they were terrified, but they knew the protocol, so they stayed quiet. The smell of rotting flesh was overwhelming, and it was all my dad could do to not throw up all over the truck. The wolf walked around the truck twice. On its third trip, my dad knew that something was saying his name. It wanted him to look at it. He had been staring forward after looking down at it, but when he heard his name, he said it sounded like my mom was saying it, so he looked. He turned his head and came eye to eye with the wolf. It was standing on its hind legs and was staring straight at my dad. Like I said, it was completely dark out there. No moon, only the stars. My dad said that he could see its eyes glowing. It said his name again, and he turned forward and stared at the dash of the truck. Out of the corner of his eye, he said the wolf got back down on its legs and the smell was instantly gone. Mike and my dad waited for around 10 minutes before they both moved to get out. They finished pumping. My dad had the metal rod in hand. He didn't say a word. As they were finishing up the second trailer, my dad looked at the opposite ridge. The place that this well sits at is at the bottom of a valley and has two huge hills that stretch around it. These hills are pretty tall, so it would take a while to get up to the top. On the top of the hill to their left, they could see the outline of a giant wolf in the starlight. They finished pumping, got in the truck, didn't say one word the three-hour ride back to the refinery. After a month later, my dad ran the same well that him and Mike saw that wolf, but he was alone. He was watching his valve talking to my mom on the phone as he waited for the tank to fill. He said he started to hear a really weird sound, like someone was running their fingernails on the other side of the trailer. He told my mom that he would call her back, grab the metal rod, and walked around to the front of the truck. He thought that some owl had run into the side of it and was trying to figure out how to fly over it or something along those lines. Now for a little more context on these tanks, they're huge. They're taller than the cab of the truck and the ladder that leads to the top was on the side of the pump was on. The side that my dad had just came from. Forgetting what his superiors told him about hearing strange noises, my dad went after it. My dad gets to the other side and inspects the trailer. The tanks are chrome and they're very shiny because they had been recently polished. There wasn't any owl or anything but three thin scratches that led from the middle of the trailer to the bottom of it. Whatever had left those marks on the tank must have been huge, but in the dark, my dad couldn't make out any footprints or anything. He shrugged it off as him being paranoid because he was alone in the middle of nowhere. He went to the pump and realized how quiet it had gotten. The only sound he could hear was the pump, his own breathing. Suddenly, he heard a hiss. It was coming from above him on top of the tanker. Except it didn't sound like an animal hissing, it sounded almost like a recorder. And backwards? That was the only way he could describe it. It sounded like Ned from South Park hissed in his voice box. <laughs> it was all distorted and anything but natural. He looked up and the only way he could describe it to me was that it looked human, except it looked like it had been broken in half sideways. It was covered in what looked like spike. He said it looked like it was covered in quills from a hedgehog. He backed away from the trailer and stared up at this thing. Its wide eyes shone back at him. He didn't know what to do, so he just stood there. After a minute, the thing made the same distorted sound and jumped off the other side of the trailer. It didn't take more than 10 seconds for my dad to get around that cab in pursuit of this thing. But by the time he got there, the creature is on the same ridge that the wolf was on. It had made its way there in 10 seconds. My dad stared at it and watched as this creature crouched down and changed. At first, the creature looked like a bird, then a deer, then a wolf. It stood up on its hind legs and walked off the other side of the ridge. After these experiences, my dad refused to go back to that well. To this day, he hasn't gone back. His next experience was about a year later. Every well that my dad has worked on has been far away from that ranch. This time, he and the person he was training had a well that was even closer to the ranch than the other. Let's call him Steve. They had finished pumping, they only had one tank this time, and had just started leaving the well when their ears popped at the exact same time. Steve missed a gear and he stopped the truck. My dad turned to him and Steve stared back at him in confusion. He tried to talk, did speak, but no sound came out. Everything was silent. The truck wasn't revving, but it was still on. From the area they were in, they could almost see straight down into the ranch. They watched as a huge light rose from the center of it. He said it looked like someone had just set off one of those huge fireworks they had at 4th of July celebrations. It exploded around 200 feet off the ground, and he watched this green wave make its way across the sky. It stopped right before it reached their truck, and as the lights faded, everything came back at once. The truck was revving on high on the verge of overheating, and Steve put the truck into gear and left the well. 
The next day, my dad got a call telling him that Steve had quit. He found out later by a local gas station owner that a family had lived in a trailer house about a mile from the ranch that they were, and they had vanished. The children had missed several days of school, so concerned family members went to check on them. They found all of the livestock uh, not alive anymore. Oh, I can't read that out loud. Inside the trailer, they found the TV still on, pot still on the stove full of old food, and food still on the table. One of the chairs was knocked over, but there was no trace of the family. My dad doesn't think that there were any investigations into where that family went because according to the station owner, multiple families who live in close proximity of the ranch vanish. My dad still works for that company, but he works during the day. His coworkers have many stories on those two wells and several refuse to even haul in that area. My dad believes that he met a walker, the same one twice. He has no explanation for what he and Steve saw that night in the sky, but he won't go out there at night anymore. No, because let me tell you guys, I am so scared of that ranch. Like, there is a whole documentary of it on Netflix, and I won't watch it. Like, I, I got that story, I think, like, a year and a half ago. It's probably honestly longer than that, and I've, I've just put off reading it because I'm scared of it. I am so scared of that ranch. And the fact that an entire company gives warnings about it, are you kidding me? That is one place I don't want to visit. Do you know how bad it has to be that I don't want to visit it? Anyways, that is it for today's stories. Um, have fun with the nightmares. I'll be right there with you, pal. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.